Hello and welcome to Animal Watch. This week we are with the huge, back from the dead, resurrected ancient molasses dog. This week Animal Watch travels to the US of A to meet a very special dog indeed. A real life recreation of perhaps the oldest breed known to man. One of the most powerful war dogs and close guardians of ancient history. One that originated over 5,000 years ago in summer a Mesopotamia, bred to protect women and children left behind as men fought and pillaged, and then later in history, fought alongside first the Greeks and then Roman gladiators in violent confrontations with wild animals, condemned criminals, and other enslaved gladiators. One who rode fearless into war alongside Roman soldiers, a clad with armor. Meet the huge and powerful original war dog of the old world, the gigantic and unbelievable Molossus dog. to 2000 years BC was a time where only the strong survived. A time where people were nomadic, barbaric, and when they wanted land and riches, they would simply just take it. A dark time and a time where people needed to have defense. They needed something that would protect the women and children left behind while men were hunting or at war. They needed comfort and peace of mind. They needed the Molossus. The original dog was created by man as far back as 2000 to 5000 BC in summer, Mesopotamia and Babylon, now known as Iraq and parts of Iran, Turkey, Syria and Kuwait. These close quarter guardian dogs were used throughout history but were eventually discovered by the ancient Greeks, where this guard dog of death's name was changed to the Molossus and was used to protect the villages, people, children, and other animals from predators and enemies. Unlike other dogs used for hunting or travel, this dog was strictly for close quarter guarding, as documented. They are referenced down to the ancient cropping of their large toes. This would certainly indicate the need for the dog to stay close. They were eventually taken on by the Romans, who then crossbred and changed the breed during the era of Alexander the Great. They employed large numbers of these dogs as guards for the Roman army. And we can see many pictures and writings showing the Romans riding into battle alongside these powerful dogs as well as fighting wild animals alongside them in the gladiator rings of ancient Rome. The original Old World breed became extinct, gradually evolving with crossbreeding into the modern day Mastiff type dogs, such as the Canna Corso, the Neapolitan Mastiff and even the English Mastiff. However, one gentleman in the USA has been on a quest, a quest to resurrect this once deceased breed and bring it back to life. Marcus Curtis is one of several people in the USA intent on breathing life back into this once heroic and admired ancient Molossus dog of war. He has taken the Molossus's modern day counterparts who he believes share similar DNA and looks and bred them together to create what he is now calling the American Molossus. Huge, fierce and perhaps dangerous. Well, Animal Watch was keen to find out. So we have sent dog lover Ashley Wilk out to meet Marcus and his pack of giant war dogs in Riverside, California. Will they eat her alive? We will soon find out. Hey Ashley, how you doing? Good. Welcome to Old World Molasses. This is Sasquatch. You are just ginormous. Oh my goodness. Want to see the rest of the pack? I would love to. All right, let's go. Hi, 
I'm Marcus Curtis. I'm the resurrector of the ancient molasses, now called the American molasses. I live in Riverside, California. I'm very happy to have brought back this ancient breed, and this guy right here is Old World Sasquatch. So Marcus, can you tell me a little bit about this big guy here, Sasquatch? Well, this is Sasquatch. He's an American molasses. He's actually the very first male American molasses. And uh, the one thing about him that everybody always wants to know is how much does he weigh? <laughs> and he actually weighs around 250 pounds. Wow, and do you know about how tall he is? 32 to 33 inches at the withers. Woo, that's a big boy. Yeah. And what about babies? How big is a molasses puppy? They're uh, only one ounce. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, they're, usually, <laughs> they're usually about two to three pounds each. Wow, yeah. that's a big guy. Yeah. And what exactly got you into like resurrecting? Let's kind of take it back a little bit because this breed, from what I read, has not been around since like the ancient Roman times. So it has been quite, quite a hot minute. Yeah, so what happened is um, I had been breeding since about 97. Mm -hmm. And um, I bred Neapolitan Mastiffs for many years, and um, I'm intrigued with the history. So I learned that they are the descendants of the ancient molasses, okay. and the molasses actually predates Rome. You know, people confuse these dogs with Roman war dogs, but they're actually from ancient Mesopotamia. Okay. Um, and that was 5000 BC. So these dogs are um, ancient, ancient. And I was so intrigued with them and their temperament and the look, the color, the build that it was just something that I, I mean, I almost became obsessed with bringing them back. And how are these dogs temperament wise? Because obviously you see a big dog and I'm sure the first reaction for most people is, ooh, he must be aggressive. Well, they they can be. I mm -hmm. mean, these dogs were bred for close quarter guarding. Right. Um, so when they're on a property, if somebody comes to the property and they don't know them, they're pretty tenacious. They can get pretty nasty. But once they know you and are introduced, whether it's you, animal, children, uh, then they become really, really mellow and low key. They're, they're great. I mean, for me, obviously I'm biased, but when you can have a giant dog that's historical, can guard, protect, and can be a great companion, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, like you were saying, as soon as I met him, he was just super calm, super chill, but I wouldn't want to break into your house. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they probably wouldn't leave. No. Right. Hi, buddy. Hi. How important is training? Because these are big animals. Yeah, training with these is, is absolute a must. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have to go and do professional training, but basic obedience is really important because these dogs are absolutely huge. And you, if you're gonna walk them, you have to have them under control. They have to know basic commands, sit, stay, leave it. Uh, it's really important. And especially around children because they can just knock them 10 feet if sure. you're know, not careful, so. <laughs> And how much does this guy eat? It looks like he's he's got a quite a healthy appetite. Two burglars a day is what we feed okay. him. Okay. <laughs> now, 18, 16 to 18 cups of food a day. That is, is a what lot of food. Yeah. So if we take Big Sasquatch here for a walk, what can we expect? How is he like with other dogs? If he sees strangers? It's an epic thing when we take Sasquatch <laughs> out because I can imagine you get stopped. People think we have a bear. They really get in shock when they see him. So I can't walk too far without constantly stopping because when they see these dogs, they just go crazy. Um, as far as getting aggressive with other animals, no, he's been well socialized. The only time he would ever engage with another animal or a person is if they're strange and try to come onto the property. Right, exactly. And speaking of that, I mean, would you recommend this breed to people with families? I mean, who's the ideal kind of candidate for the molasses breed? Well, so the molasses is ideal for families that want a dog that is low key, mm -hmm. a great companion, and will ward off strangers. They're perfect for that. They can be around children. They can be around all kinds of different people, all kinds of different animals. They actually originally were bred for protecting families, property, and other animals. So. For me, they're ideal. If you don't like shedding and you don't like drool, <laughs> drool though, lots of drool. <laughs> that would rule them out. And he seems like, I've said before, super chill. Is that kind of his overall demeanor? Does he have spurts where he goes for, I call them the little runnies, where they go run in and go crazy, or is he just kind of like this all day? No, I mean, the, the one thing about them is that they are mellow. Mm -hmm. They like to chill and be around their family all the time. I mean, literally all the time. But make no mistake, I've seen remarks on my videos and on the photos that the dogs are fat and lazy and couldn't <laughs> do anything. 
But I'm telling you, they're lightning fast, extremely powerful when they want to be. When they need to be, sure. Um, but again, they're not for everybody. You know, right. so if you want a, a chill big monster, this is them. If you want something that can go run marathons, this wouldn't be the breed. So everybody wants to know, and you want to know what an American Molossus collar is like. This is Sasquatch's collar right here. <laughs> Let's see how it looks. Let's see. 37 inch oh my head he goodness. has. And you can see that the collar. That is collars. a big neck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's clamped all the way down, so that's crazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, so we are here with one of Sasquatch's sons, and this is Mr. Chief. So how old is Chief? Chief is 17 months old. Oh wow, so he's still a baby. He's a baby. And now, you know, to be honest, when I think of big dogs, you think it's kind of a man's dog. That's like a stereotype, right? So right. what got you interested in the molasses breed? I'm a big dog person, yeah. first of all. Uh, we had a Neapolitan Mastiff and that passed away and wanted another one mm -hmm. and just started looking for and we found Marcus Curtis um, in Old War Molasses. Saw his dad Sasquatch on the website and had to have one. Yeah, <laughs> and what's the general reaction been like Like when you're walking him? and <laughs> it's, it, He's very intimidating. Yeah. Um, people either stand back or ask if they can come see him. Uh -huh. Every, it's always a wow. Yeah. What kind of dog is He's that? He's a showstopper for yeah. sure. <laughs> You're another big guy. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. Sure. Later on, Marcus took Ashley out with his Molossus dogs to meet the general public. Let's see what they made of them. Oh sure. The name's Sasquatch. <laughs> you sure? learning all about the resurrection of this very old breed and also finding out what they are like up close and personal. Remember here at Animal Watch that if you are thinking of adopting or purchasing a large dog like the Molossus, do your research first. Also sign up for a very good training and socialization class either online or drop into your local classes. Mastiff breeds can be very stubborn and also protective of their owners and territory. Early socialization and control of your dog with positive means is very important. Drop us a line and we'll suggest some great online courses you can follow. But now, back over to Ashley and the USA Animal Watch team. Well, thank you so much, Marcus. Where can we learn more about your amazing breed here? Um, you could check us out at www.oldworldmolasses.com. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter at Old World Molasses. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this exciting episode of Animal Watch. Make sure you continue to tune in because we've got upcoming episodes talking about different dog breeds, wolves, animal rescue, and conservation. Bye for now. If you would like to find out more about the modern day descendants of the Molasses breed, please click through on the links at the end of this episode.